This is Dr. Hancock, and welcome to Topic 7, Strategic Financial Management. There are many different definitions of strategic management. The simplest one that I've found, which seems to cover it, is that strategic management is the continuous planning, monitoring, analysis, and assessment of all that is necessary for an organization to meet its goals and objectives including financial performance. The strategic management process involves analyzing business decisions before implementing them. Strategic management typically involves analyzing internal and external strengths and weaknesses, sometimes known as a SWOT analysis. It involves creating action plans, and it involves executing or implementing those action plans, aka doing the work. It also involves evalu evaluating to what degree the action plans have been successful and making changes when desired results are not being produced. Strategic management is a critical process in every business. Strategic plans are used for all types of organizations, including profit and not-for-profit healthcare organizations, all types of businesses, government agencies, and other nonprofits. If the organization is a business, its strategy should be able to answer these three questions. One, who should the organization target as customers and who should they not? Number two, what should the organization offer these customers and what should they not? And three, what is the most efficient way to do this? The questions seem very simple, don't they? But the answers can be quite complicated to come up with because it really is defining who is your target market, who can you serve, how will you serve those people, and what is the most efficient way to do that so that you can provide good quality service and also still maintain a financial positive margin. It's not easy. Providing outstanding customer service is, or at least it should be, at the heart of any business's mission statement. However, many organizations fail to recognize that the path leading them there is by focusing on the happiness of internal customers first. Now you might be asking yourself, what exactly is an internal customer? People tend to think of customers as only being external to the business. In healthcare, it's usually the patient, the individuals who purchase products or services from the business. While internal customers may not necessarily buy anything, each customer group has a substantial impact on the success of the business. To understand their particular significance, it's important to define what each customer type is and how they contribute. So who is an external customer? That's the easy one. We usually know them as patients or consumers. External customers are essential to any business. They provide the revenue stream that the company needs to survive. Satisfied external customers are often loyal and make repeat purchases. They're also likely to refer your business to other people that they know. In healthcare, our patients and our payers are the primary external customers. We also have external customers that are people just generally in the community or the public at large and other agencies and organizations who might benefit from our services. An internal customer is any member of the organization who relies upon the assistance of another colleague to fulfill their job duties. That includes every employee and department of any business, from human resources to finance, from sales to customer service, from custodians to the CEO, from vendors to distributors, and all the way up to the president or CEO of the company. You and I and everyone has or is a customer to someone else. Internal customer service is an act that ultimately results in the ability or inability to provide excellent service experiences to external customers. To put it in very plain English, 
you have to treat your employees well and there has to be good working relationships internally in order for us to do a good job in serving our patients. So back to strategic planning. It's a business process that's been used in healthcare since the 1970s. The Legere and Dunham textbook describes two main approaches to strategic management, which they call traditional strategic management versus contemporary strategic management. Traditional strategic management uses an analytical approach with sequential steps, linear thinking, and top-down execution. Contemporary strategic management is newer and based on complexity theory. It uses new and emergent approaches, and it relies much more on dynamic processes and bottom-up or cross-functional team leadership. To learn more, please take a look at the article I shared on Canvas called Revolution in Strategic Planning. It is a few years old, but it has a nice discussion of the traditional or old way versus the contemporary or new way of planning. The core difference is that contemporary strategic management acknowledges that we live and work in a complicated, fast-changing environment. Managers need to be on alert all the time for changing circumstances in the environment that can impact the organization's performance and finances. When changes happen, we have to adapt and adapt quickly and change our processes in order to survive and to thrive. Strategic planning should develop from the mission, vision, values, and goals of an organization. You've probably covered this in prior management courses, but this slide reviews what those terms mean. The mission statement is essentially the purpose of an organization, why it exists at all. The vision statement is what the organization wants to be in the future. We jokingly say as, this is where I want we want to be when we grow up. The values represent the fundal, fundamental philosophy and truths of the organization the things that are important to the organization's founders. And the goals represent the major directions of the organization and should link the mission and vision to actions. I encourage you to examine how mission, vision, and values are expressed in a variety of healthcare organizations, including your own. On this slide are links to descriptions of the mission, vision, and values expressed by three different hospital systems in Mississippi and Louisiana. Most healthcare organizations share this information on their website. Look for about us or who we are on the website. You can also try entering the terms mission, vision, or values in the search box on the organization's home page. Take a look and see what you think. If you're looking at your own organization, does the mission, vision, and values resonate with what you've seen as an employee? Why or why not? From the mission, vision, and values, organizations express their overall strategic goals. The goals should be broad directions for achieving the organization's mission and vision. This forms the basis of a strategic plan. Organizations sometimes use different terms in the strategic plan, but the overall process is similar. There are examples in your textbooks, Chapter 9 of the Legere and Dunham Taylor book, and Chapter 24 of the Baker, Baker, and Dworkin book. Leaders need to define how they will accomplish the broad goals of the organization by breaking the goals down into narrower objectives. Actions are then planned to accomplish the objectives. Each action should be linked to a series of performance measures to provide accountability. The performance measures will tell you what outcomes or key performance indicators should be accomplished, along with target dates and who is responsible for the performance. A well-managed organization will have a written strategic plan document that is widely shared so that employees throughout the organization know what's important, and the performance measures will be reported and evaluated frequently to determine if the organization is on track to meet its objectives and goals. 
One way to report performance on an ongoing basis is to use a green, yellow, red color coding flag system for performance measures. Performance measures that are on track are flagged green. Failing performance would be red. If a manager is predicting performance problems, they could flag it yellow as a way to bring attention to the problem and seek help. Anything that's flagged red or yellow needs close attention, reevaluation, and actions may need to be changed. I'd like you, after you finish this presentation, to look on Canvas at a real live strategic plan I've posted from Parkland Hospital in Dallas, Texas. Parkland is one of the largest metro hospitals in the country, and this is an interesting way that they have um, put together a strategic plan through the year 2020 on how they will serve their community goals. Please check it out. Healthcare organizations routinely pursue performance improvement initiatives in order to improve clinical outcomes and patient experiences and reduce organizational costs. If these efforts are not well executed, however, they can become black holes that suck up time, money, and resources while yielding little in the way of real sustainable improvements. A major reason that performance improvement efforts fail to produce the desired result is that organizations often mistakenly think of a PI project as a series of one-off projects, each with its own beginning, middle, and end. To be effective and sustainable, an organization's performance improvement initiative should be integrated into the organization's strategic objectives. PI should be a systematic, organization-wide approach to improving processes and goals. PI plans can help leaders decide what objectives and actions are the best for achieving strategic goals. Some examples of analyses methods that are used in performance improvements projects are cost-benefit analysis, break-even analysis, and regression analysis. We talked about break-even analysis earlier in the term. I encourage you to look further at cost-benefit analysis and regression analysis and see if those methods would suit your needs in the business plan that you're going to put together. Managers at all levels of the organization have important roles and responsibilities related to not only strategic planning, but particularly the implementation part of the strategic plan. It's the manager's role to cultivate a positive culture of performance excellence and a reward system. The manager should always uphold the organization's value system, both in words and in actions. The manager should maintain systems that focus on the business of patient care. Managers should ensure that all strategies are in tune with the current needs of the customers, both internal and external. And finally, managers should maintain the system by ensuring that any issues or problems are noted quickly and senior leaders are made aware before any issues escalate. While not all of us are managers, everyone can be a leader. And so, for this particular topic, you have one of your larger assignments of the course, which is to create a business plan. In contemporary strategic management, every employee is a leader with responsibility for the organization's performance. What I'd like you to do next, and this is on the next two slides, is to review the 10 American Hospital Association must do strategies. We talked about these earlier in the course. This time I want you to look them over and consider how you, as a leader, would improve your organization's performance. Are there ways that you could increase business revenue? How about cutting costs? Could you make a process more efficient? Do you see a way to better serve your customers? You're going to come up with an idea and propose your idea using a written business plan. The AHA came up with these 10 must-do strategies for leaders and managers in hospitals in 2013. We've talked about them previously, so I'm not going to read through all of them today. 
ones where I would expect you could definitely apply your knowledge and skills would be to use evidence-based practices to improve quality and or patient safety or to improve efficiency through productivity and financial management. You might also be aware of ways to better educate and engage employees um, or to somehow seek population health improvement. Are there ways you could actually be working in your community to help people to lead healthier lives and avoid hospitalization? The next step is to discuss your rationale. What's the purpose of this proposal? Why is it needed? What are advantages and disadvantages of your proposed change? And what other alternatives did you consider? I would expect that you would choose at least one alternative to talk about, even that just means the status quo. But if you're proposing a change, you might look at are there multiple ways that you could do the change? For example, could you do it all at once or in steps? Or are there different possible ways of accomplishing it? The next thing you'll do is prepare an implementation plan. I specifically want an implementation timeline where you specify what your milestones are and who's responsibility, who is responsible for each milestone. I've put a resource on Canvas for you to see how a simple implementation plan can be done using Microsoft Word. The, second, the next part of your, of your business proposal should be a description of the costs and benefits. What are going to be the costs of implementing the change you've proposed? As much as you can, describe the actual costs and any changes from what the costs are now. You should also quantify the benefits. Will it bring in revenue? Will it cut costs? How much? Go ahead and calculate those as closely as you can to reality and then demonstrate the net effect on the organization's finances. How will your proposal impact the bottom line? Will it make money? Will it cost money? And if it costs money, what are the improvements it will make that will justify the cost? <clears throat> the final element of your plan should be an evaluation. So you need to tell me how you'll know whether or not your business proposal was effective. What outcomes will you be measuring? How frequently? And how will you know if your performance exceeded the plan or fell short of the plan? Consider how you're going to measure improvements in either patient's health care cost, access, or quality. And then the final element is just a simple references page. For any references that you cite in your business plan, you should cite the sources in the text of the plan and then list the references on a separate page using APA format. Don't forget there are also two discussions that go along with this topic. One discussion is in the first week, and the second discussion is for the second week. So please take a close look at the discussions as well as the full description of the business proposal assignment. Your business proposal should be written in Microsoft Word document using APA format, like I said, with a title and a reference page. Please check the calendar for due dates. This week, you'll share your proposal idea in a group discussion, but you'll have two weeks to complete the business plan. If you have any questions, please contact me right away. Good luck and get started.